wanted to start today's video with this because of gloom, despair, and agony on me. And uh, I was going to discuss things about how I'm, you know, kind of losing hope about some stuff. And I went to the uh, the land authority a long time back. It's been about six months. And I said, you know what? It'd be nice to have a little sitting bench right here, so that you could just sit and read a book and enjoy that view with this, you know, little gully here. And looky here, it paid off. I met with the guy, you know, and he kept his word. Although I, I would prefer a bench <laughs> with a back on it, you know. I mean, this is this is pretty cool. I mean, I'm going to sit here just one second and show you the the view. So that sun, you know, it's kind of kind of rough, but uh, I'm next time I'm out here, I'm bringing a book, and I'm going to sit right here and read for a couple of hours, and uh, I want you to think about that. But uh, we'll get into the video here in just a minute. I'm still getting some exercise, and uh, but I just had to show you this because all of a sudden I was like, wow, because I was going to talk about all the things that are, I'm despairing over, and here's a daggone bench. Holy moly. You know, not what I had in mind, but it's it's good enough. All right. You know, one of these days, I'm going to bring some flip-flops and hike through that so I can see where that goes. You can see somebody put a log in over here, but you get them, your shoes would be a muddy mess trying to get through there. And Anyway, maybe if we get some dry weather. But uh, let's get on to today's video. So, uh... Anyway, I wanted to just talk about things, censorship a little bit. Uh, you know, as you know, I'm completely censored by the big tech uh, giants, uh, Google, and uh, that's uh, that accounts for 95% of the searches online. Uh, luckily, I, I did find out a little tidbit of information. I didn't know this, but even if you have an iPhone and you use the Safari browser, the default search engine is Google. <laughs> so, so I can't win for losing. If you have an Android phone, that's a Google operating system, you know. So, and then of course, if you, even if you have an iPhone, they default to the Google search engine, so nobody can find that cybersecurity guy. But I, I was despairing because what's happened now is I'm completely censored off of X. I think it was for that NSA video that I made. Probably brought me back up on the on the three-letter uh, uh, Eye of Sauron. It turned turned my way and gave me a quick look and flip me off like a fly <laughs> so, so now you can't even find that cyber sec guy on x and how do i know that because you know every day one of the things i look forward to is i always have comments you know from people and i and i i go out and i post comments on other people's uh, posts on x uh, it's just a hobby for me you know i i kind of enjoy a lot of times you get some good information i mean it's a it's a good platform and uh but all of a sudden, after that dropped that NSA video, nothing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get a comment. I don't get, I mean, you know, my, my feed is just, it just sits there like, you know, like a dead animal. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, and then, of course, uh, the number of views. You know, usually I would get a couple hundred views, you know, because I got 700 and some followers. Which, by the way, that ain't going up either. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's staying right there. And uh, so I had 700 and some followers. And you think that, you know, when you put up, when I post a video on X or whatever, you know, I get a couple hundred views. Now, now it's like 30 impressions. <laughs> I don't even know what an impression is. Maybe somebody actually scrolled past it. I mean, so I am completely destroyed on X now. I'm completely destroyed at Google, so if you're actually watching this video, it's a freaking miracle. So I did want to just talk about censorship for just a minute, because it's it's a real problem for the United States. And uh, But I was also hoping that you might, if you actually watched this video uh, or found me, uh, could you leave a comment below about, because you know, right now we're starting to see the effects of, uh, you know, Venezuela <coughs> crime is way down there, because... They emptied their prisons and they sent them all to the United States. So all the Venezuelan criminals are here in the United States now. And I think El Salvador, they've been emptying their prisons uh, and sending their criminals up here. So most of those are drug cartel members. So uh, you know, I don't know if you follow the news, but one poor young girl in uh, Georgia, she was murdered by an illegal immigrant. And then uh, there was a baby that was raped by a 
and I want to say baby I'm you know I'm t talking less than 14 I don't, I don't know the age I don't think they ever released the, the t details but uh, raped by an illegal immigrant what kind of sick bastard rapes a young kid like that I well you know the, 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 all the people I'm telling you this thing's gonna blow back now my question for you this is the comment that I want how can you stand to be around a Democrat I, I can't stand the sight of a Democrat. You know, they want to destroy this country. They want illegal immigration. Why on earth, would, unless, you know, you're just satanic, demonic? I mean, I guess all Democrats are, are demonic or something because why else would you want a bunch of criminals flowing across the open border and, 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 and you're all for it? I mean, look at the sanctuary cities. I was just listening to a report that uh, they're, that New York City has hired contractors to put the uh, illegal immigrants in hotels uh, or three-bedroom apartments. And, the, and, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, I, don't, I don't know anybody from New York City, but from what I understand, it's a couple thousand dollars just for a little, little shoebox to live in, you know. So for them to be putting up the illegal immigrants... I can't imagine how much that's costing the Democrat taxpayers. And they, they're they all for it. <laughs> Somebody explain this to me. I mean, if I lived in New York City, I'd be pissed off as hell. You know, especially, well, let's just take here in Florida. If, if where I live in Florida, if all of a sudden we were bringing in busloads of uh, illegal immigrants and then uh, housing them in places, I apologize, the sun's going to get behind me. I wasn't planning on... Well, let me show you because I'm doing a little different hike today. This is actually a fire break. And uh, I discovered this. It's really hard hiking through here because it's a deep sand. Uh, but let me just show you. I'm going to flip this around so that you don't get the sunlight and you can enjoy the view. Let's just do this. Let me get this fixed. There we go. Yeah, that way the sun's behind us and you don't have to look at my ugly mug. But uh, I guess my, you know, my question for you is, is why are Democrats for that? You know, and then Biden goes to the border and he gives a speech about gun control. Why do our Democrats for gun control? The gun is not your problem. I mean, I, in fact, uh, I want to say it was Buck and Clay. They made a real good analogy. He says that, you know, if he went out and let's say I got a, you know, you, you got a DUI. Okay, so what? You're going to come back and you're going to blame that DUI on the car? Do you think people wouldn't just laugh you out of the room? So every time the gun, you know, is used in a, in a negative fashion by the criminals that the Democrats are bringing in, remember, you know, law-abiding people very rarely uh, uh, use a gun illegally. But uh, anyway, and, and then cry for gun control because <laughs> we're going to blame it on the gun. No, blame it on the freaking criminals that you're bringing across the border, you Democrat idiots. You know, holy shit. You know, and that's, I hate to be mean, but I'm going to be mean for just a second. I hope, I hope that all these victims of these illegal immigrants are Democrats. I, I just, you know, I, I, I hope that none of them are independents or Republicans. And, uh, and by the way, there was a, a comment on my feed and the guy, he said, because uh, I get these all the time in my feed, you know, and they say, I... I'm not going to vote Democrat or Republican. It's just a uniparty. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, my reply to him was, was there are no good Democrats. <laughs> not one. But at least you have a few good Republicans. And, and I, I was pretty, pretty cool. That was back when I was getting comments, by the way. <laughs> and he actually wrote me back and says, you know what? Good point. So I guess I made my point there, you know. So you never know. Every now and then you win one. So, but uh, I just... I don't understand that. And then also, you know, all the child trafficking. Why are Democrats for bringing kids across and, and putting them in these sweatshops here in the United States? You know, what kind of demonic people are they? I mean, explain that to me. And also all of the women that are being trafficked into prostitution by the drug cartels. Why are Democrats for that? Please, God, somebody explain this to me. I, I, I just, I can't even be around a Democrat no more. I, I just, I can't do it. And then, of course, let's even, let's head on another one. Let's talk about the fentanyl. You know, we got over 100,000 people dying each year. And the Democrats love it. I guess they just want to exterminate the people in the United States. That's, that's the only explanation that I got. Democrats hate life. 
they hate humanity. They certainly hate Americans. So, I mean, you know, so yeah, they're doing a good job. They're killing about 100,000, 200,000 Americans a year with the, with the fentanyl, and they're all for it. What kind of sick mind is for killing a bunch of people with fentanyl? I, somebody explain this to me. I, I know I keep saying that. Somebody, because I, I just don't even understand it. So the other thing that had me depressed, and I just wanted to talk about this for just one second, because, uh, yeah, I don't know about you. I, I never had kids. I, it wasn't by design. I just um, was a short, fat troll, man. <laughs> you know, women didn't find me too attractive as a growing up, you know, so I, I never met the right girl to settle down with and have kids. Plus, I was a nomad anyway. I was always moving around from contract to contract, and that'd be a tough life on a kid. And plus, you know, not being, not staying in one place very long, you know, even if I was dating a girl, the next time I'm moving to another state again, you know, boom, there goes that relationship. So anyway, I, I'm just, just crying on your shoulder for just a second about that. But I, here's my problem. Okay, I, I have approached three veterans organizations here. Look at that view. That's why I came this way. See this, just hiking down this uh, fire break. Isn't that awesome? It looks like a, a African uh, safari. And boy, I, I, I bet you that nobody, nobody hikes this. Because, well, let's look down. Do you see? A, I don't see a single footprint. So, I mean, it's not that bad a hike. I, you know, I said it's tough hiking. I'm just taking it nice and slow. You're not going to, you know, keep a three-mile pace through here. Anyway, sorry, I got off on a tangent there. What the hell was I talking about? <laughs> uh, oh, the, well, the fentanyl. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the veterans organizations. Let's get into that. So I called up three of them. And there's a, you know... Uh, I'm a member of our country, our choice. And I said, look, you know, a representative from our country, our choice would like to come up and, and give you a talk. And the first question was, is that a political organization? I said, no, no, these are just Americans banding together that care about the country, you know. And then they said, uh, well, you know, we don't we don't we don't do political stuff, which why not? Why wouldn't you do political stuff? Wouldn't you want a healthy debate between a Republican and a Democrat as a veterans organization to hear what they had to say, to determine who you're going to vote for and why and what their policies are? I certainly would. But no, anyway, I'm to get off on a tangent. So, But I couldn't believe it. All three of them, it just seems like they don't even want to bring up a, you know, somebody to just give a talk about our country, our choice, and talk, you know, answer any questions and stuff. That's, that was the first thing. But the thing that really, really gets under my skin, these people got kids, and they probably have grandkids, a lot of them. Don't you think that they should care about those kids' future? The fact that, you know, we're $34 trillion in debt as a nation, that we're at war with Russia, that there's an extermination taking place in Gaza? These people don't care. I mean, I guess as, as veterans, you would think, but they really honestly don't care. I guess that they figure their kids can fend for themselves and their grandkids. Because I'm going to tell you what, we're on the Titanic and the iceberg is coming. And uh, it's going to be bad once that iceberg hits. So, or, or we're going, going, you know, on a roller coaster uh, where the, the track is out and we're going to go right off the end into the abyss. I'm going to tell you that right now. So on a... On, an, on that note, I did want to talk about uh, buying silver, gold, platinum one more time. Because uh, I, I wanted to get, clue you in. Because uh, I use SD Bullion. And I tell you what, I, I can't beat them. I mean, they, they always have these sales. You know, 249 over spot for, I think it's Canadian Maple Leafs right now. But, I, you know, if you're going to buy coins like from SD Bullion... You know, you want to pick up a sleeve of 25. That gives you, because the more you buy, of course, the cheaper they are. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the next thing is you can set up e-check with them so that you get the best price. That just draws the money right out of your checking account. And then the last thing is if you buy, I think it's over $500, which a sleeve of 25 is over $500, you get free shipping. You know, and by the way, be sure and check the free shipping. They default to FedEx. The last time I bought something from them was about a month ago. I guess I just was not paying attention and I forgot to check the free check-in and they defaulted it to, to FedEx and charged me $15 to ship it. 
you know what what do I care I mean you know so what if you go through US mail it takes a an extra day or two man look at that whoo that is just beautiful sorry that the Sun's at the wrong angle but that's why I hike over here see over there where the trail actually is uh, you're looking back this way but you don't get this type of view so let's just keep going all right so I guess that's uh, that's the last uh, oh so I was talking about SD bullion well the other thing that you want to look for okay because I did a comparison uh, this this past week because I was going to pick up some more you know every now and then I just make a small purchase and I uh, so they had the mint certified uncirculated Canadian 2024 Canadian maple leaves $666 for 25 and you know two they just sell it by one they call it one well for $30 less you could buy the Canadian maple leaves random year uh, uh, you know circulated well are you kidding me pay the extra $30 man I mean if you'd see that that deal you know because uncirculated coins are very valuable and they will be in the future you know it circulated coins I mean that's just more or less bullion you're gonna you're just gonna get the bullion price for them but you know 10 years from now an uncirculated uh, little tube of coins that's gonna be worth a lot because the people like you know uh, vintage coins that are uncirculated you know and, and certainly don't open the tube <laughs> I mean I, I mean of course how, how can I know what's in the tube unless I open it but I but I think that would take away from your resale value uh, and whoever buys them, they might want to open it. I don't care. I trust SD Boy, and I, I haven't seen where they ever do anything wrong. So, so I guess that's the last thing in this video. We're going to talk some more about the uh, three-letter agencies and how they're spying on everything that you do. Just, just accept the fact that any internet device that you have, everything you do with it, text, phone calls, uh, you know, whatever, it gets scooped up. And stored in an NSA database for your entire lifetime and just make sure that you're taking care of your kids okay you know don't let them put any nude photos or uh, you know uh, Johnny puking over the rail I mean they, they might think that's funny but that that's gonna follow them around for the rest of their life you know imagine that Johnny later on in life runs for office you know and they and of course to the NSA if they don't like his politics they'll give that video to uh, you know, New York Times or whatever, or splatter it up on X, and the next thing you know, here here's here's a video of him puking over the rail, you know, and, and then they'll discredit him. Well, this is this is what he was like when he was young. Oh my God, he was a you know a hellion, a juvenile delinquent, a criminal, you know. And so you know, it's, I don't know how you're gonna beat it into your kids. I just you know, honest to God, I. I don't think I would even give my kid a cell phone, you know, I mean, I, or if I did, I mean, it'd be just like carrying a gun and that's the way you got to look at it. I would tell them, I'd say, look, I'm going to give you this cell phone. I don't want you making any phone calls. I don't want you making any, uh, sending any text messages that, that, you know, are questionable. And I certainly don't want you to allow your picture to be taken, you know, of you doing something illegal or stupid or you take a picture of somebody else doing something illegal or stupid you know uh, keep their privacy unless it's a criminal activity and you're going to turn it into the police <laughs> I, mean, I guess that, that'd be a little different story right so uh but i i just wanted to make a talking video because i'm so so disappointed i was getting some real real traction on x and i thought you know what this is going to be it because when the the interview drops and my book's going to be available to the whole world here soon. You know, I thought maybe, you know, I can get that book out into the hands of some people, you know, to help them with their individual cybersecurity. Uh, or just learn about you know, some history or just read about Edward Snowden. I mean, there's a lot to that book that you would just enjoy just the reading. A lot of my stories are in there. Uh, speaking of stories, I had one that I was going to tell you that I thought was funny as hell. You know what, I'll... I'll click off here and as soon as I think of what the story was that I'm going to tell you we'll, we'll continue the video I finally remembered it <laughs> I, I anyway what triggered the, the story in my brain was I, I rescued a young girl she was hiking around Sunny Hill and uh, she was lost and she she'd been out there for uh, about three or four hours and I said look you know tell me where your car is and she told me I said man you are one hell of a long ways from your car 
I said, let me just give you a ride. So she hiked on back to my car with me and I gave her a ride on over to her car. So I, I felt good. I, I rescued somebody. What can I say? But it, the, uh, the story was, was when I was in the hospital with my broken neck and they, they put me in a room with a, with a criminal. I mean, this guy, he was uh, really uh, whacked out. He definitely had mental, uh, mental health issues. And uh, had, I, I think he was in there for like a drug overdose. And, uh, but anyway, I don't know what happened, but he, he just, all, you know, he could get out of the bed and everything. He wasn't crippled like me. I couldn't even get out the bed. Turns out, I mean, we, me and him got along. <laughs> I mean, it was, he's a scary dude, man. I, I was always worried that, you know, he might just slip over through the curtain and slip my neck one night, you know. I, I didn't know for sure, so I tried to be as nice to him as I could. But, uh, so anyway, he, he freaked out. I don't know, you know, like I said, I, I don't remember exact details, but something happened and he got out of the bed and he pulled those, uh, you know, just like in the movies, he pulled all those IVs out of his arms and everything, you know, had, he, they had him on the oxygen tube, he pulled that out and then he just got out into the hallway and he says, I'm done, I'm leaving, I'm done, I'm done. And of course, you know, security, security, of course, security can't touch him or anything. So there must have been a, a whole crowd of uh, six Six nurses, you know, a bunch of security guys. Everybody's chasing this guy down the hallway. And all, you know, his butt's hanging out. He's got that, uh, you know, the, the, the schmuck on, you know, the hospital gown. Uh, so, <laughs> so here's a nude black guy, big, you know, fairly, fairly big back black guy running down the hallway, screaming and hollering, you know, with a bunch of people chasing him. I mean, you, can you picture the scene? I mean, I thought I was living in like a movie or something, you know, I, <laughs> how many times have you seen something like that? But anyway, that was the, that was the funny story. Of course, they, they eventually corralled him and got him back and calmed him down. I don't know. Maybe they they shot him up with something or whatever. I you know I was surprised. I, I if I were them, I would have just let him go out the front door. <laughs> you know, and said, uh, "All right, see you later." You know, uh, come on back when you when you're ready. Isn't that beautiful? Good God! Now you know why I'm hiking this. You will never. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now. You would never see a single person where I'm at right now. Not ever. I guarantee it. Other than well, you can see there are some tracks here where the vehicles have been through. Uh, but that's very rare. That's just when they're doing the fire break. But, uh, all right. So I just wanted to finish off the video there with that funny story. I just, because I, 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 was, I was thinking about it, you know, because of that nurse. And I was laughing. I said, you know what? I don't think I've ever told that story on one of my videos. So I hope you find these stories entertaining as much as I do. Thought I'd get one shot on the video. Another reason I do this hike. Check them out. They're all over there looking at me. <laughs> Pretty cool. Look at this land. Boy, wouldn't you love to own a, something like this and have your own cattle farm? Look at them. Look at them moving. Yeah. And then that, here's another view of what, a, what I'm doing. Isn't this awesome? I mean, it's slow going. It's, it's a tough hike, but it's so beautiful. I just, I don't, I don't care. I'm only doing about one mile an hour. Well, just another nature shot. Kind of coming into a real nice view right here. So you can kind of see the brown grass here off in the distance so pretty much coming to the end of hiking on this uh, fire trail isn't that cool I'm in the middle of nowhere middle of nowhere I wish that sun was behind me let's just get you a look down here so you can see what what I'm what I'm hiking there you go that's what it looks like pretty cool so I forgot I wanted to make you jealous it's about 70 some degrees maybe in the high 70s and a beautiful breeze blowing on a perfect day here in Florida and that's why I had to get out and get a hike in today even though I got a lot of work to do around the house of course I stopped by Home Depot and picked up some plants and some dirt but uh, isn't that beautiful just enjoying the, enjoying the hike oh yeah I'm finally off of the fire road back on the trail if you can call this the, this is the worst part of the hiking on this trail anyway I wanted to talk about two quick news items uh, the first is uh, Nikki Haley you know I mean here's another person that was in the Trump administration not only is she a Democrat you know I mean there's you want to call her a rhino I wouldn't call her a rhino I call her a complete she's being funded by the Democrats and she's okay with that just to just to prolong the primaries because you know that Trump's going to win. Now, 
the only thing that I could think of that might make sense in a certain kind of way is, let's say Trump does get thrown in jail, uh, you know, with our corrupt uh, legal system, that, uh, you know, maybe somehow he would be declared that he couldn't run. And then, of course, then you've got, you, you would have Nikki Haley on the ticket, you know, as, as a backup to Trump. And good God, if that woman became president, I'll tell you what, that'd be, that'd be worse than Hillary Clinton becoming president, for sure, for sure. So that's a that's a big concern to, to worry about. But I mean, I can't believe how how much these people stab Trump in the back. I mean, Pompeo turned into a, a wolf. Uh, Christie, you know, uh, he was. Of course, then of course the other piece of news that I I, I like, but uh, you know, I can't believe I don't understand. Was it uh, McConnell? I think he's out of Kentucky. Is that right? I can't believe they've been putting that guy back in every damn year. Because I think that I would have thought the people in Kentucky have some sort of common sense, you know. But I guess not, because they've been putting that, the t call him the turtle in there. He's, you notice he hasn't even in, uh, endorsed Trump, McConnell, because he hates Trump. You know, he hates the, he hates the MAGA movement. In fact, he sabotaged a lot of the the elections in the 2022. McConnell did, just because he wanted to keep his reins on power. Imagine being 82 years old and you just want to stick around and be in power and you will sabotage your own party to to make sure that you you hold the reins well anyway he's going to step down in november but he wants to stick around long enough to sabotage the uh the republican election coming up you know i'm sure he'll do everything he can to torpedo trump uh but one one question for you all right i don't remember what it was ronna romney mcdaniel okay she's stepping down but you know what i haven't heard anything in the news about who's you know going to take her place? I mean, I know who I want to take her place. It'd be Laura Trump, or um, uh, the, the, what was the other woman that ran against uh, Rana back in the day? Uh, I want to say it starts with an H. Heather, she'd be a good replacement too. But if we just if the Republican if McConnell has his way, he'll just stick another Democrat in charge of the Republican National Committee. That's all Rana was. You know, Romney's a he's a Democrat. You know, that whole family is Democrat. You know, oh yeah, he ran as a Republican. Yeah, good God. So, I, I anyway, just just saying. So, who's going to replace Ronna Romney McDaniel? Are we going to get somebody in there that has some character, or just a repeat and rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat? You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.